Happy Motivational Monday, everybody. I have Chris McCarthy here from earthpaint.org. <laughs> Today, we're going to talk about how to start a nonprofit and how to utilize it in your community. Chris, tell us a little bit about earthpaint.org. How, how did you get started? What got you into it? Oh, man. Well, um, I have been in the painting industry for close to 16 years. Um, shortly after that, I had gotten into real estate, and there was one thing that both of those things had in common. It was, what do I do with all of this old paint? It's just sitting around left over, nobody's doing anything with it. N nothing, and usually you acquire 40 gallons of paint when you buy a new house, and the old owners are like, that's your problem now. You know, because you been... keep it around for the other, like if something happens with your paint job or something like that. Right. Yeah. If I need a touch up, I you know it's it's something that we're trained to do, and I don't know many people who have done touch ups. <laughs> so uh, it's one of those things where it's like, all right, fine. I'm never going to use this stuff anymore. Um, we realize that it's not something that could just be thrown away and shouldn't be. And so people look to me, uh, being in the industry, to kind of solve their problem for them, and there really wasn't any good solutions. So um, we started to tinker and come up with a solution that now has become earthpaint.org. Um, that is our website. That's our name. Uh, kind of a two-in-one you know, marketing plan. Mm -hmm. And we have really made strides in the recycling industry as to what we do and how this product is recycled and repackaged and put back on walls. So you have a full new process that you've created to sustain how paint is used today, essentially saving people money, time, and a better quality product is what you're saying, right? There, It, it has all of that. And then we took it one step further. Um, it was my desire to be able to empower people with disabilities or special needs. It was something that I, I found... There was a lot of people that really were capable of working and were not really given opportunities or didn't know how to find those opportunities. And so I said, I've got a dirty job. If you want to do it and you want to make some money, you know, give Earth Pain a shot. And it's become this thriving culture of people who are not disabled when they're in our building. It's, and it's amazing. So you got a group of community of people who couldn't even find jobs doing something that's bettering the environment. Right. Um, yeah, empowering those who um, had a need and a, and a desire to do something with their lives and allowing them to brainstorm with us and come up with maybe something that's even more effective based on their abilities um, and, and taking a product that people want to make sure is recycled responsibly and doing that, mm -hmm. utilizing a, a workforce that is just so excited to be part of it and uh, allowing them to help us help this environmental cause. So it sounds like you took something that you're knowledgeable on and you applied the skill sets of what you've learned through the industry and you wanted to find your why. What, why, why are you doing all this? What, what led you to here? And then you found the opportunity through earthpaint.org. So what that process that you created, how did you create that process? What is that? And what is that process? Mistakes. <laughs> lots and lots of mistakes. I, I won't say mistakes. Uh, <laughs> like Edison, we figured out all the ways that didn't work. Mm -hmm. um, no, there's, there's a lot of human element involved with taking someone's unwanted paint and opening a container and looking at it and saying, okay, this has to be processed a certain way. Um, we still haven't figured out the best way to do that, but we have made a lot of advancement um, in an industry that really doesn't exist out there. I mean, there are a handful of paint recyclers out there, some of which are funded by the states that they're found in, which we're not in one of those states. We're not quite that lucky. Um, but that being said, we wanted to do it anyway. Um, and so to answer your question, why did I start this? Because I was the right guy. There was a niche and I was willing to take it on. I um, was willing to make those mistakes and take a pay cut and 
really do it for the betterment of society and the environment because I didn't really see anyone else doing it for those reasons. Got it. And so when you think of earthpaint.org, you think of it as bettering the world, right? And, and you're trying to get people onto that mission. So when you're reaching out, I know you're looking for volunteers right now. What's something that you tell them when you're bringing them in to help the foundation? Oh, a volunteer, I'm going to say thank you so much for just doing anything to help us, um, whether it's moving a product from one side to the other or really diving in and, and getting down and dirty with us because uh, this is probably the cleanest shirt that I own. <laughs> um, so there is that element of, you know, you're really just going to have to dive in. And uh, Mike Rowe, if you're listening, I, I get you. Um, it's it's You really have to be open and willing to um, really play. And so our volunteers are typically very open-minded, and they, um, if have the opportunity to work alongside of our special needs staff, it's a really re rewarding experience um, because you find somebody who you would classify as disabled. Mm -hmm. And when you're working alongside of them, they're really guiding you through this process. They are empowered in a way that's, um, they're much better at it than our volunteers are, and they make it known right away, mm -hmm. which is uh, just kind of lends to this this power and this, this feeling of, um, wow, I'm, I'm giving back, I'm learning something. This was a really good use of my time for today or this week or this month, as long as people spend with us. I was going to say, so for when they're volunteering, are they doing like a couple hours on the weekend? Or what, what does that look like if someone, one of our audience wants to volunteer? If you'd like to volunteer, I encourage you to spend as much time with us as possible. Um, so it, we have a lot of different volunteers, and they come from different places. So the um, very high energy, like corporate groups that come in. So we've had several corporations who have sent something like twenty people, mm -hmm. and we blast the music, and we have a really strong day of production. Um, those are. Those are great days for us. We get a lot done. We um, pick up some of the slack that we've, you know, we tend to be behind every day. And a lot of nonprofits, I think, feel that way. Mm -hmm. We also have your one-off volunteers who watch a program like this and say, wow, that sounds like something that I could get involved with for a day or maybe uh, you know, one day a month. Um, and then we have which is typically a stigma, which is the court-ordered volunteers that mm -hmm. work for us, which I have found to be some of our best brand ambassadors, some of people who, he, oh, so you got a speeding ticket and you had to work off your community service hours. The moment some of these folks step foot into earth paint, they're lifers. And I'm like, for getting that speeding <laughs> ticket because you find that they're joining our social media and they're helping share the mission and it's really easy to see what our mission is once you step foot into our facility. Um, so yeah, I say, you know, the more community service people that actually need to do it for a reason, we encourage them to give us a shot. So those people that have time, which is obviously a currency a lot of people are willing to give when they want to give back is one thing, but let's say I don't have a lot of time right now uh, being an entrepreneur, you know, you're moving a lot of things. Um, you're coming out with a thing called Giving Tuesdays. Yep. Okay. And that's every, starting in December 3rd? This year it's December 3rd. So it's typically the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. Okay. Um, it's kind of a worldwide thing. And I, I would say it's like Christmas for uh, nonprofits. So it's the one day a year that big, huge corporations typically will offer a donation match. Um, there's a lot of media around it on that particular day. And so everybody on that particular Tuesday could choose a charity that they would like to support monetarily mm -hmm. um, or donate their time that day or both. And uh, so that's like the one big day a year for nonprofits. And we're a very small localized nonprofit, but we could certainly use a few people to believe in us on Giving Tuesday. So that's that's a huge initiative for us. Awesome. So you can either volunteer, which helps you guys out tremendously in the production line. You can either 
donate and that will help build your production. I know right now you're saying you need heat in the space and it'd be nice for your workers to have a little more luxury when they're volunteering and doing their work, right? Right. Um, and then lastly, people can actually purchase this paint that is better quality, more, you know, towards your nonprofit. Um, yeah. Where can they buy the product? So our Earth Paint branded paint um, is available in six Habitat for Humanity restores currently. Um, we have McHenry County, which is relatively new. That's uh, McHenry and Woodstock. Um, we have, there's one in Elgin. There's also one downtown on um, Peterson and Pulaski as a restore there. Um, we're also in Joliet and Chicago Heights. And so we're growing our retail space by working with other nonprofits like Habitat for Humanity and, and really bringing a new customer base to their stores. They've never really had paint. Well, now they have not only really good paint, but a consistent paint. Well, our, our job is to make sure that we're just managing our displays within their stores um, because they're just as short-staffed as we are um, and underfunded. So why not bring this new product line and keep it all nonprofit? And that was really my mindset to uh, launch a product to the market that really doesn't have a market. You know, recycled paint isn't a thing mm -hmm. yet, um, which is crazy with all the recycled product that's out there. Paint is just one of those things because it's so labor intensive and there's no machinery that really can do it well. Mm -hmm. um, you need that human element to be able to create this consistent product line and that's what we're creating and empowering people to help us do. Awesome. So, I mean, if you want to check out any of these storefronts, we're going to leave a list in the description below of where you can find these stores. Any time they buy or purchase the paint, it's going towards the nonprofit, correct? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, any purchase of our paint supports our nonprofit as well as whichever nonprofit that you're buying it from. So, so it's going towards a good cause. You're not you're not just continuously feeding the system of the paint suppliers that are putting these recycled paints out there. They're actually reutilizing this product, and it's going towards your mission. Absolutely, and and there is, you know. Recently, there was America Recycles Day. That was um, my big message on America Recycles Day is, yes, you could take the time to learn more about recycling, but think about the products that are out there that people like me are really putting their heart and soul into to make sure that it is exceeding all the minimum guidelines of what recycled products are. And trying to change the industry, um, eliminating this need for brand new product and you know you can take the time just a few extra seconds to choose a product that does do more mm -hmm. for our environment and we've added the human element to it as well cool. um, so yeah not not just saying go buy my paint because it's the best <laughs> in the world you know I, I I can't say that but I can say you know put us in the category of all of this really highly sustainable fully recycled product lines that I think people really should be investing in. Cool. Well, you guys here to, heard it here. You can either volunteer, you can donate, or you can buy the product. All goes to the nonprofit. So if you want to help uh, nonprofits like earthpaint.org, please like, subscribe, hit that bell not notification icon. That'll get you links to videos that we have upcoming and different people we're going to be having on, different guests. So we're, we're always trying to give back in the communities. And we want to make sure that the messages are put out there to you guys. So thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys next week.